This is In-Ear Insights, the Trust Insights Podcast. Do you want to understand data science better as a marketer? Would you like to learn whether it's the right choice for your career? Do you need to know how to manage data science employees, vendors, agencies? Take the Data Science 101 workshop from Trust Insights. In this 90-minute on-demand workshop, you'll learn what data science is, why it matters to marketers, and how to embark on your marketing data science journey. You'll learn how to build a KPI map, how to explore and analyze Google Analytics data, how to construct a valid hypothesis, the foundation of marketing data science, the basics of statistical concepts like centrality, distribution, regression, and clustering, which if you don't know what those words mean, you will, uh, essential soft skills in data science, and how to hire marketing data science professionals or agencies. The course is on demand, so you can watch it whenever you want. You don't have to be at any place at any time. Uh, and it comes with the videos, the audio recording, PDF of the slides, automated transcript, KPI map example, and a sample workbook with data because this is hands-on. You get to try some of the stuff out. If this sounds good, just head on over to trustinsights.ai slash data science 101. That's trustinsights.ai slash data science 101. In this week's In-Ear Insights, 2020 is the year that keeps on giving. <laughs> and um, here we, we are. are in what, the... December like 45th or something? December 89th? <laughs> so the, the big question that we're wrestling with today, and we thought we'd sort of share our brainstorming out loud with you, because I'm sure a lot of folks are having the same conversations, is with all the tumult going on right now, particularly since we are a United States-based company, even though we have you know friends and clients around the world, um, we are still sensitive to what's happening within our, our country. The events of the last week and things have proven that uh, we are living in an extremely volatile time. Um, there, uh, for anyone who's been under a rock, there was you know uh, an armed insurrection attempt uh, last week at the the nation's capital, and uh, according to some posts on social media, there'll be two more attempts on the seventeenth and the twentieth of uh, this month. And so, one of the things we've talked about in the past is crisis management frameworks. Like, when is a, an appropriate time to shut up and just you know, if you have nothing useful to the contribute to the discussion, you shut your mouth. All right, that's what. But, our parents used to say, like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. <laughs> um, versus do you still continue to run your business, which is important. And, you know, businesses, assuming that they're, you know, ethical businesses, uh, do contribute to the world, do spend money, do you know, uh, keep people's livelihoods going. Or do you also tack into, no, you know, we do have a point of view and we should say something. So there's a lot to unpack here, Katie. You are the the... CEO of the company, you are responsible ultimately for what happens with the company. Mm -hmm. What's it like in the very warm seat that you're sitting in? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of nauseous. Um, you know, it's, I, I tend to be very aware and sensitive of how everyone else around me is feeling. And I'm not saying that other people aren't, um, but I really try to take that into consideration when making decisions such as this. And so, you know, I really am in that headspace of, do we just go ahead and shut up and wait it out? Or do we move forward with business as usual? Now, you know, the big channel that I'm focusing on, on right now is social media. So, you know, I still think that we're going to send out our newsletter, you know, as planned, those are sort of the business as usual things. But right now, social media is right at the center of all of this in terms of, you know, the division of people and the opinions and the fake news and the real news and, you know, everything else going on. And, you know, obviously some big things happened with uh, certain accounts getting banned and people feeling like it's a violation of their, you know, First Amendment and the free speech and, you know, privacy. And so my feeling, my initial feeling is that, you know, we don't we as a company don't have anything to add to that specific conversation right now unless we had a perspective on data privacy so you know putting up organic social posts like hey do you know your digital customer journey isn't what's needed right now i feel like that can wait because we still have other channels such as email and you know people are still reading the content on our website, which we should absolutely keep 
pushing out. We have, you know, our podcast, our live stream, those things should keep going forward. I feel like that, you know, when I'm looking at overall, you know, reading the room and taking the temperature, we don't need to be putting up our organic social right now or any sort of paid social. I feel like anything related to social right now can wait. Um, you know, and I would love to hear sort of the, you know, other side of that, because you're absolutely right, Chris, like we have another couple of weeks to get through, we have the inauguration, but then you sort of have to play that game of, well, after the inauguration, are things suddenly amazingly going to get better? It's not like midnight on January 1st, like it doesn't like flip a switch. So at what point do you have to say, okay, I have to get back to normal. My gut is not right now, but at some point we're going to have to. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, I think certainly for brands, doubling down on organic and paid search right now is a smart idea because if someone's looking for you, particularly by name, then they're interested in doing business with you, right? And that's what makes a lot of sense to, to put a lot of emphasis on that. That way you're not reaching out to people who don't want to hear from you. They're coming to you, right? They're asking, I, you know, management consulting from Trust Insights. If they're Googling for that, yes, we want to, to hear from them. Um, in terms of the conversation itself and things, it depends, you know, as with everything on what do you, what do you have to contribute to the conversation if you did? Um, you know, I certainly have uh, no shortage of <laughs> my own opinions about uh, where I stand in things. Uh, and, and unsurprisingly, it stands on the side of data, right? And provable things and stuff. So, uh, but... In terms of, do we have anything to offer to the discussion? Publicly, I'm not sure. Um, privately, yes. Uh, and this is something that, you know, we didn't talk about it last year because it wasn't appropriate to. Um, but during a lot of the awareness and um, events around Black Lives Matter and stuff, you know, we, as a company, we took private action behind the scenes, everything from making donations to doing some volunteering and some um, pro bono work for people mm -hmm. to try and, and do our part to make things better. And I absolutely think in, in this situation today, there's room for doing that again. Uh, again, it's not something that you want to publicize, uh, but uh, there are things to be done. There's data to be analyzed. Um, one of the things that came out over the weekend was uh, some some hacktivists, if you will, uh, just copied the entirety of the contents of Parler, the, the, that one chat app, and made it available as a 70 terabyte Docker image that anyone who is interested in analyzing the data could. Are there things that um, we could offer in that situation? Possibly, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. but certainly more eyes on solving a problem generally is, is better. I mean, not always, but you know, there's, there, there's such a thing as too many cooks in the kitchen. Uh, but I know that every company has talented people working at it. I know every person, you know, working in marketing and data science and AI has skills to offer. And I don't think it's a bad idea for people to give some thought to, okay, if I were to contribute, if I were to donate my time, how would I do it? You know, what could I do to make things better? Because you can't go back in time. You can't undo something. So what are the things that, in your view of the world, would make the world a better place? I think that's a really good way to think about everything that's going on right now or has been going on. Because what you're trying to do is, it's not that you're taking the emotion out of it, but you're trying not to make a purely emotionally driven decision. And so, you know, Chris, if we took data out of it, and we're just saying like, this is right, this is wrong. You know, it's a black and white issue, you know, being like, it's only one thing or the other, there's no gray area, we could take a lot of really big missteps, because we're not looking at, you know, any sort of data that's available, or really thinking about like, am I doing this, because I want the pat on the back? Or am I doing this because I think it's the right thing to be doing? And I think that that's also sort of when you're making those decisions, especially as a very public brand. I know there was a few brands that chimed in on um, the insurrection that was going on last week, and it didn't go well. Even though they had the best of intentions, it didn't go well because it wasn't the right time or place for that particular brand 
to be a part of that conversation because they've never been a part of that conversation before. And I think that that's something that, you know, as I'm thinking about how we fit in or what we're doing or the actions we're taking, it's the same thing. You know, have we taken part in these conversations before publicly? Will it feel off brand to us, even if, you know, in our own little bubble, we're talking about it constantly, we're looking at the data constantly, we have to balance that with that external perception of, well, Trust Insights has never weighed in on this before. Why now? Yep. Uh, this is actually a conversation I'm having with my oldest kid about um, what the difference is between, you know, doing good work and doing what's called performative work, or, you know, uh, in the LGBTQ community, it's called performative allyship, where you, you know, you, you do things and you, you talk about stuff that's really for your own benefit, right? You know, changing your logo uh, mm -hmm. to be a certain set of colors and things, as opposed to doing things that actually make the situation better. And it's funny because in in one of the religious traditions I grew up in, you know, there's this whole idea that, you know, if you if you pray in public, you get your reward, you get the pat on the back. And there's, you know, whereas if you pray in private, um, you get better reward, uh, at least according to that particular doctrine. And I think mm -hmm. there's merit in that idea and that philosophy for how companies should be approaching this. Because to, yes, to your point, a lot of brands did a lot of performative stuff last week. And the question was, well, where have you been for the last four years? Right? Why have you not been contributing to this conversation from the beginning? Uh, why mm -hmm. have you not been helping people who have been disenfranchised? And, uh, you know, for some of the people involved in these situations, there is an understandable reason by, behind what they're doing, right? And you know, it's really important, I think, for people to to that we've we've gotten this weird place in society where we've equated understanding with agreement, and I think that's incredibly dangerous. Like, you can absolutely understand someone's reasons for doing something, even if you completely disagree with them, but you have to be able to think like they do to go, oh, this is why this is happening. If you do, you can't do that it means you have got substantial flaws in your data analysis capabilities, right? Because we've talked a lot. Data is more than just numbers. It is also mm -hmm. understanding the why of something. So I don't think these brands have jumped in, have given a lot of thought to the why. Mm -hmm. And they kind of jumped in very in a very performative way. And it, yeah, you're right. It backfired. Whereas if you're giving serious thought to, okay, well, what is the reason for group A for their actions? What's the reason for group B or group C? What are the reasons for their actions? And then based on that analysis, can you find something that improves the situation for at least the majority, if not everybody? Um, you know, in, in the example I'm thinking of with some of this data analysis work, there are some people who clearly committed criminal acts. No question identifying, isolating, and removing those people from the equation by making sure that law enforcement has that information would be a useful first step because what they did is helpful to no one, mm -hmm. right? It's just like taking any type of contamination out of a, a, a product, right? If you can remove contamination, then the product becomes usable again, mm -hmm. right? So what are the things that you could do? What are the things that we could do as a company? Well, certainly making donations to causes that are working towards better data around these kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, contributing our time uh, and our and own analysis and letting the appropriate folks know, like, hey, we did this thing privately. Like, mm -hmm. We did this thing. If it's useful to you, great. If it's not, try it anyway. Um, and promoting a viewpoint of, okay, you don't have to agree with it, but you do need to understand it. Well, and I think that that's, you know, I know something that we we did do publicly uh, last year during a lot of the Black Lives Matter protest was share some resources. So, you know, we weren't necessarily taking a stand one way or the other, even though we all had, you know, strong, similar opinions. But publicly, just knowing how, you know, uh, I don't even know what the word is, you know, how um, not temperamental, not fragile, but basically how reactive, volatile, volatile people can be, especially on social media, you know, you want to make sure that you're walking that line in a neutral enough way that you're not just complacent, but that you're being helpful without getting political, without getting this, without, it, it is a really difficult thing to do unless your brand is a brand 
that has been doing that all along. So to suddenly jump into the fray, you're going to get eaten alive. And so, you know, one of the things that we can do in this particular, you know, situation, if we do want to have a voice in this conversation on social media is, to your point, Chris, sharing some data analysis to help people understand what's been going on or how to wrap their heads around a lot of the information they're seeing, you know, without giving that commentary on the analysis, but here's the data. Um, and then also just sharing some resources to help people understand maybe a little bit more about how, you know, privacy and how communications work on platforms such as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Parler, or why these companies have been able to make the decisions they have, and they're not necessarily violating your right to free speech, but it's really about what you have agreed to when you signed up to use those platforms, mm. because those platforms, even though people use them as news platforms, they're not news platforms. They don't follow the same conventions as a newspaper, for example. That's true. The other thing I think is important to differentiate because it is gotten muddled is that there is a difference between, you know, politics and points of view versus values and what's right or wrong and i think that has gotten lost and i think you know for a lot of folks who are trying to figure out you know conversations of where they stand in a lot of this stuff it's a mistake to conflate the two you can have political beliefs that are all over the spectrum but ultimately you do need to be clear about what is right and what is wrong you do need to be clear about what is uh you know, honest and dishonest and that's where I think the line can get money because like if you look at, for example, if you go to trustinsights.ai, our website, you can see our values page. Here are the, the values that we stand for. And mm -hmm. in this particular situation, there are very clear lines of division about is something honest or dishonest? Is something fair and just or discriminatory and, and biased? Is something uh, selfish or selfless? And so I would say additionally to brands thinking about you know, do you get involved? Look at your own values, right? Mm -hmm. If your values stand in opposition to a certain point of view, then I don't see it as contradictory to take a position that is aligned with your values. Now, if your values are out of sync with what you actually believe, you may need to go and revisit what your values actually are as a company. Um, but I think there is a case to be made that when you have something that is clearly out of sync, with your corporate values and you've been living them the whole time um some cases very publicly some cases not mm -hmm. then there's less harm and less risk in participating in a conversation if it is if your perspective is aligned with the values you've always stood for and you have members of your community who will say like hey you know these people have been on the side of you know honesty the whole time or these people have been on the side of uh, you know, improvement or whatever the, your corporate values are. Now, if your corporate values are kind of a muddy mess, like, you know, we believe in the leveraging of synergy, <laughs> stuff like that, then <laughs> it's going to have a harder time. But being very clear about those values means that it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody in your community uh, when you do take a stand on something that matters to you. I agree with that. And, you know, I do want to be clear that I am not saying that, you know, just because you're a brand doesn't mean you shouldn't have an opinion on, you know, the environment that we're currently living in. Like you absolutely should have an opinion. You do have an opinion. You're a human being. Of course you have an opinion. Uh, I think what the message that I'm trying to get across and what I'm trying to work out for myself is it's okay to have an opinion, but how do you thoughtfully share that opinion? You know, it's not that you're avoiding conflict, but you're not necessarily bringing conflict upon yourself. You're not trying to damage your brand reputation just so that you can, you know, have your two cents in the conversation. So it's really trying to find that balance of obviously you have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, whether it's a strong opinion or no opinion. No opinion is an opinion. Um, you know, one of the things that I saw last week. Uh, on Twitter was someone was saying something along the lines of, you know, if people aren't speaking up and saying that everything that's happening right now is wrong, then those are people you don't want to be following. 
And to me, that was the wrong way to approach it because people could just be jumping into the conversation just to be echoing, like the echo chamber of, well, yeah, me too. And I don't want to see this happen. And, you know, I've always felt that way, but I've never said it before. And it's, it just felt like the wrong message to convey of like, well, everybody should be standing up against this thing. Well, yeah, but there's ways to do it so that it doesn't just feel disingenuous and inauthentic. And so Chris, to your point, taking a look at your company values is a really good place to start. And so, you know, obviously if you value honesty, you can speak about, you know, here's what I feel or here's what the truth is. The challenge there is that you're still gonna get that, uh, you know, reaction of people saying like, well, no, what you're saying isn't the truth. And so you just need to be prepared that it's not going to be this perfect little moment where everybody agrees with you. That's definitely not where we're at right now. And so it's just a matter of how much of that are you willing to work with? And you can't necessarily come at it combatively. If someone says, I think your opinion's wrong. Okay. You have to be okay with that continuing to argue with people on social media is just going to bring you down that rat hole. And I feel like even my thoughts right now are sort of incoherent and spiraling because there's so much to wrap your head around. There's so much to process. And so, you know, I think the bottom line is I think what we as a company for Trust Insights, what we're going to end up doing is really taking it day by day, uh, sort of seeing like what feels appropriate, what is appropriate, where are we comfortable, you know, potentially having someone say that was the wrong move, you know, okay, our, we had the best of intentions, but we did the wrong thing. Um, you know, what is our level of risk? I agree. I think it starts with your values and your, our, your parents' admonition to, if you don't have anything nice to say, or in our case, if you don't have anything productive to say to the conversation, uh, if there isn't a focus on how do you make things better, um, it's okay to err on the side of not saying a whole lot right now while you figure out the right approach to, to making things better and mm -hmm. to be committed to saying, okay, how do we, whatever the situation is, whether it's racial uh, injustice, whether it's income inequality, whether it's gender bias, whatever the thing is, with the focus, how do you make the thing better? How do you improve the thing so that the maximum number of people achieve the maximum number of po amount of positive benefit. You know, I don't think that there's any major value system in the world that would disagree with that general example of, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. uh, as for how that rolls out tactically, you're right. It will be a day by day thing. We'll figure it out. Um, but in, in general, again, erring on the side of are we making things better or worse? You know, are we adding value or taking value away from people? Because every moment that you spend looking at a piece of content is a moment you could have been doing something else. And so we certainly don't want to take time away from people that they could have been doing something more productive if we publish something that isn't all that productive. Mm -hmm. So if you've got thoughts about this and you got uh, comments about it, pop on over to our Slack group. Go to trustinsights.ai slash analytics for marketers. We have over 1,500 people in the community uh, asking them questions just like this like how are you folks handling uh the situation what's your perspective uh i think it's the ground and uh i'd love to see you there and wherever it is that you're watching or listening to this go to trustinsights.ai slash ti podcast to subscribe to the show to make sure you don't miss any episodes thanks for listening and we'll talk to you soon want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you